In centuries past, the conquering Greek armies poured across the known world like a glass of red wine spilt on a map. And like spilt wine, the Greeks left their mark. Well, I didn't travel all the way to Sicily to consider what the Greeks left behind. I wonder how past they got here. In this part of Adam's pilgrimage, he's in Sicily, traveling from west to east. He catches up with a gorgeous old lady who knows a thing or two about cooking, talks fish with a Trapanese fisherman, and gets real sweet with a group of nuns in Agrigento. This is my pilgrimage. Come share the journey with me. Adam is in Trapani, on the far west coast of Sicily, catching a cable car to the top of Mount Erice. On a clear day, you can see North Africa, and it's easy to see why Trapani was such an important port for spotting invading armies. There were armies of Greeks, Romans, Vandals, Ostrogoths, Arabs and Normans. Each civilization brought new ideas, and each left something of their culture behind. And perhaps the greatest cultural inheritance was left by the Arabs, couscous. I want to get a real sense of the area, its food and its passion. Stefano, I understand yeah. there's a strong Arab influence here in Trapani. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a bit more about it? Sure. Actually, Sicily has been the only region of Italy mm. uh, who has ever been under Arab rule. It was about the year uh, 1000, yeah, but it lasted a couple of centuries and it left uh, deep traces in Sicilian culture, uh, in Sicilian mentality, and also in, uh, of course, the Sicilian food. So Trapani being the only city in Italy uh, was uh, an, uh, its own tradition of couscous. Okay, and I can see this uh, Arab influence even with you know the Tower of Nubia behind us. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. That's, <laughs> that, these towers are referred to as uh, Arab towers. Starting from the 15th, 16th centuries, there mm. were pirates all over the place, and Sicily was very exposed to the to them to this, to this threat. So they build all these towers to protect them, obviously. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So there's like there's something like two two hundred towers. Wow. Like this one, uh, all over Sicily. So trapanese, couscous trapanese. Is that with fish? Yeah, I'm guessing. You yeah, know, yeah. The influence yeah, of yeah, fish. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's that's where the the local uh, recipe comes in. It involves all the family. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's it, nice. The family process cooking it. Exactly. And you mentioned the Arabs bring couscous, mm -hmm. but did they bring in pasta also? Uh, we don't know that for sure, but uh, what we know, uh, and it's quite interesting, is that back then, around the year 1000, mm. uh, they set up the first um, mass production of dried pasta. So as factories. We know it, yeah, yeah, basically factory, factories. Basically. Yeah, because they were, uh, they had advanced technologies for that for those times, and uh, yeah, they set up actual factories to make pasta for the population. You know, some people think of couscous as a grain but it's actually a type of pasta. It's made with semolina. I found an adorable little lady in Trapani called Bettina. She's been making couscous the traditional way all her life, by hand. In Trapani, it's made on a Saturday to be eaten with the family for lunch on Sunday. So I know the Arabs brought couscous to Italy, but the people of Trapani introduced seafood and they created couscous alla trapanese. I'm standing in once was the seafood market of Trapani. Signora, buongiorno. Ciao. Ciao. Ah. But before we get into cooking, signora, we've got some amazing people on to the right of me. Guys, can you play a little tune for me? Hey, stop.
Thank you very much, guys. Time to prepare the couscous. What are you doing, Signora? Si, make un po' di semola. Semola into a big bowl. Lo vai, vedi, girando. So she's adding Così. water to the semola, which is basically durum wheat. La tiepida. Okay, she keeps adding it and agitating it with her hands. Certo. So onto the, basically onto a tea sì. towel or tablecloth and just letting it dry and absorb all that water. So she's got onion chopped up, garlic, Sale. and salt into the mortar. Pestare. Chili in the oil. Olive extra oil. Extra virgin d'oliva, lo giri. Extra virgin, see. Sì. So what yeah, I understand questa. is this is an old couscous cooking, basically, pot. And you can see it's terracotta and glazed, and she's telling me this is the old way, the very traditional way. Alloro. Okay, on the base, putting the bay leaves into the base of it. Okay, so the couscous, now we've prepared it, we need to steam it between one and a half to two yeah, hours. No. She's taken off the couscous, it's been sí. steamed. So she's put on the pot to make the zuppa, onions, garlic, oil. Cipolla. See? Si. So she's adding the tomato paste to give it some body and some depth. Wow, vieni, vieni. decent amount. That's a great little tip there. So she's using the water that she steamed the couscous, yeah? So it's nice and hot, straight into the pot and get everything working Doberare together. Doberare sempre paletti di legno. So after five minutes, all come together and boiled, you add in the crushed tomatoes. Girare. Zuppa de pesce, the soup of the fish. This is all the local fish of Tapani. Stir again. Okay, she's so taking out the fish Pesce out of the super. You add the brodo, the super, slowly. Oh, Not all at once. This is a big tip. Wow. Vai girando. Don't pour the whole super over the couscous, otherwise it's going to be all gluggy and not right. And she keeps folding it, you know, like as if you're making a cake. She's folding the couscous nice and evenly so that way it coats with the brodo. Copri. So you're putting the couscous Deve to sleep. Couscous buona notte. No, no, no. So it's allowing the couscous. <laughs> One hour you could do it speedily, she's saying to me, to basically allow the couscous to absorb all the soup flavour. But, Signora, I want to taste it right now. Okay, okay. Mmm. Picante. Mmm. Saborito. A bowl of bellissima. <laughs> it is amazing. The texture of the couscous is nice and fluffy. The flavour from the super. And from what I understand, non mangiare più. Just gonna let it cover. Basically, when this is served at a dinner table, the fish goes out on a big platter, the couscous is next to it, the super comes out in another bowl, and what happens is the guests basically grab what they want, add more super to it if they want it, couscous, and enjoy the meal. Signora Bettina, grazie. Grazie anche a te. In bocca al lupo. That is one special couscous alla trapanese. After the break, Adam seeks forgiveness for his sins. I need to be on my best behaviour later when I catch up with the nuns. Stefano and Bettina spoke to Adam about the traditional Trapanese way of preparing couscous, but historically it was actually an Arab dish, and he's really keen to find out how the Arabs prepared it. Adam travels to San Vitolo Capo to find out. I'm here today with Professore Enzo Battaglia, who knows a whole lot about couscous. Ciao Enzo. Ciao Adam. Enzo, can you please tell me about a recipe Mahareb couscous? In Tunisia, North Africa, the Arabs ate couscous with vegetables, lamb and chicken seasoned with spices from the area. It wasn't until couscous arrived in Sicily that it was mostly eaten with fish. So we try? Ah, 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 come dettano le scritture, cioè, secondo le scritture, il couscous lo si mangia con le tre dita della mano destra. Eat with the fingers. The people that eat with one finger is the devil. Two fingers is the gods, like Muhammad. Three are the normal people, and basically five are the greedy people that just want to eat it all and don't share the beautiful couscous. So we try? Mangiamo. Okay. Mm. Mm. And I can taste the flavors of, you know, Morocco and all that Arab influence, the cinnamon, the saffron, the chicken, the polo, and like it's a sweet and savory couscous, saying that's really delicate, but very tasty. But the thing I want to know, Enzo, is I heard there's a sweet couscous. 
Enzio tells me that in Agrigento, there's a monastery where the sisters make a wonderful, sweet couscous. Agrigento, have to. But he insists they will not share the recipe, as it's a closely guarded secret. The Sisters of Santo Spirito have made sweet couscous with what they claim is the same recipe since 1270. Well today, I'm lucky enough to be here with the sisters. They're going to explain a little bit more about this sweet couscous dish. Madre, could you tell me about the ingredients in the couscous? La semola, pistacchio, la mandorla, zucchero e cioccolato. But how is it made, is what I want to know. <laughs> It's a secret, Ma, please. No, can you tell me? No. So there's no way they're going to budge and let me know how this couscous is made. And the reason is because it's become a business enterprise for these savvy sisters. Each sale goes towards helping the sisters help those in need, bless their cotton socks. Can I try some? Si. I can mangiare? Si, can mangiare. This is what I've been waiting for. Mmm. Mmm, mm. one more for good luck. <laughs> I can definitely understand now why this is a secret. It's full of flavour, pistachio, chocolate, sugar, but still nice, light, fluffy. Impossible a recipe, no? After the break, Adam persists for that secret sweet couscous recipe. Madre. What was your calling to become a sister? The sister explains, it was a feeling of love for God that was overwhelming. It led me to a life of devotion. And that is beautiful. And what's also beautiful is this amazing spread of cakes in front of me. Can you tell me a bit more about these madre? Because you know what, I've been wanting to eat one of these beautiful shells. Pistachios inside. Mm. I'm trying them all. Mm. This is like a dream for me, eating all these beautiful sweets, pistachio, which I see is a very big common thing here in Agrigento. Oh wow, that is amazing. Madre and sisters, thank you very much for your time and explaining to me all about couscous and your amazing desserts. Thank you. The sisters of Santo Spirito are sweethearts, with a real knack for hospitality. The Sicilians are proud fishermen and Adam visits the port of Trapani, which has one of the busiest fishing fleets in Sicily. Oh, have a look at the fish, look at that. Amazing colours, freshness. I'm here today in the harbour of Trapani and I'm lucky enough to have the Presidente of the boats, Pietro. Buongiorno. Ciao. Pietro, in Australia, we're lucky we catch a lot of different fish, snapper, whiting, swordfish. But what I'm interested in is what do you catch in your waters? We catch many types of fish out here. Cephalo, a type of mullet. Scorfano, scorpion fish. And San Pietro, which is John Dory. Perfect. So Pietro, how many years has fishing been in your bloodline? My grandfather was a fisherman. My father was a fisherman, I'm a fisherman, and my son is learning to be a fisherman. We hope to carry on the family tradition of fishing. What I really want to know, Pietro, is how do you cook fish with couscous? We cook our couscous in fish stock made from pieces of fish. We let the stock boil first and then add it to the couscous. I really like to eat it with big chunks of fresh fish on the side. After the break, fully inspired by his journey and newfound knowledge of couscous, 
Adam takes to his kitchen to prepare his own version of this ancient type of pasta. Which he's gathered from his journey, Adam prepares a dish that celebrates the cultural diversity of Sicily. Of all the people that influence the food of Sicily, it's the Arabs that impresses me the most with their couscous and spices. And today I'm cooking my version of seafood couscous. For the full list of ingredients and method, visit adamspastapilgrimage.com. To start off my seafood couscous, dice an onion, cut some garlic and chilli, and fry it off in some olive oil. Couple of cloves in. Chilli. It's up to you, you can take the seeds out, but for me, a little bit of spice in this seafood couscous will be perfect. Give that a minute or two to saute away. Next, we're gonna add in some parsley stalks. It's a great start when you're making a stock or a brodo like this. Next, we need to get in our seafood. So we have some fish, calamari, mussels and cockles. Prawns. Give that a good stir. Crushed tomato. You stop. I'm just going to add a splash of white wine. Softly bring that to the boil. Place the lid on top just to keep it all inside. The flavour within the mussels and cockles start to pop open. Everything will combine together and then we get on to making our couscous. All right, there we have it. Our mussels have popped open like so, perfect. Cockles as well. Now it's time to get onto our couscous. Bettina showed me how to make couscous the traditional way and it took a couple days, but you know what? It's not that hard. It's easy as getting your couscous. One cup to one cup of boiling liquid. Now in this case, we're gonna use the beautiful brodo, the stock from all that seafood to flavor our couscous. Into a bowl. So, grabbing that hot stock and measuring out one cup. Okay. Now, the Arabs not only brought spices into Sicily, they brought an amazing array of nuts. They brought in pistachios and almonds. So I'm gonna add some almonds into the couscous as well. So, our boiling liquid over the top. Make sure it's nice and evenly covered. Easy as placing a plate on top and allowing that to stand for five minutes. A little bit of parsley, the flat leaf into uh, our brodo. And if you've noticed, I haven't added any salt whatsoever. Obviously, seafood has its own salt basis to it, so there's no need. Just some cracked pepper. Reduce the heat down to nice and low. Give it a couple minutes and we'll fluff up our couscous. All right, let's have a look at our couscous. Lid off. Grabbing your fork, nice and softly, just run over it. And there you have it, it's that easy. There we go. Lemon into the couscous. It's a little squeeze. Just lay the couscous on the base. Your plate like so. Then pick up all that beautiful seafood. Just spoon it straight over the top of the couscous. And there we have it, my seafood couscous. With all its ruggedness and significant historical coastline, there is a real charm, a smile and a deep beauty to be discovered. Sicily. Next time, Adam will explore a rugged part of Italy that didn't have the luxury of quality controlled commercial guild pasta makers.
A place where pasta was made by hand at home. Calabria. For this episode's recipes, stories and more, visit adamspastapilgrimage.com.